Welcome back, friends, and good evening. I'm Motorcycle Pastor. It's January 21st, and you've come to the place where we give thanks to God, where we recall His unfailing love to us throughout the day, and we rest in His promises tonight and every night of our lives. I want to encourage you to open your Bibles tonight to Judges, the 15th chapter, verse 18, where we read, And he was very thirsty, and he called upon the Lord and said, You have granted this great salvation by the hand of your servant. Shall I now die of thirst? We're going to use Charles Spurgeon's Evening by Evening to get into God's holy word for us. Here's what Charles writes. Samson was thirsty and ready to die. The difficulty was totally different from any that the hero had met before. Merely to get thirst quenched is nothing like so great a matter as to be delivered from a thousand Philistines. But when the thirst was upon him, Samson felt that particular difficulty to be more weighty than the great past difficulty out of which he had so specifically been delivered. It's very usual for God's people when they have enjoyed a great deliverance to find a little trouble too much for them. Samson slays a thousand Philistines and piles them up in heaps and then faints for a little water. Jacob wrestles with God at Peniel and overcomes omnipotence itself and then goes limping because of his hip. Strange that there must be a shrinking of the sinew whenever we win the day, and that the Lord must teach us our littleness, our nothingness, in order to keep us within bounds. Samson boasted right loudly when he said, I have slain a thousand men. His boastful throat soon grew hoarse with thirst. He betook himself to prayer. God has many ways of humbling his people. Dear child of God, if after great mercy you are laid very low, your case is not an unusual one. When David had mounted the throne of Israel, he said, I am this day weak, though anointed king. You must expect to feel weakest when you are enjoying your greatest triumph. If God has wrought for you great deliverances in the past, your present difficulty is only like Samson's thirst, and the Lord will not let you faint, nor allow your enemy to triumph over you. The road of sorrow is the road to heaven. But there are walls of refreshing water all along the route. So tested and tired pilgrim, cheer your heart with Samson's words, and rest assured that God will deliver you before long. <clears throat> As I read that to you, and I thought about, of course, Jacob wrestling with a man, then an angel, and he believes he's wrestling with God, at least the might of God through an angel, if nothing else. And Samson and the Philistines. I couldn't help but remember what we read this morning. About the parting of the sea and passing through, coming from Egypt. You know, that was a trial overcome and easily could sit with these. Because, you know, when they got there, it wasn't long before they were bemoaning again. You've just been released from slavery. You've just seen the walls pushed back. But you know, your complaint is that I had flesh in the pots back there. Wow. How often we complain about the little things. You know, I don't forget that God is the one that touched the hip of Jacob so that he had that limp. God was angel again. With Samson, is it any different? Samson's not just complaining. He actually does faint. He's thirsty. He's just done something mighty. But oftentimes, whatever ministry we do, we pour out ourselves. Truly, what we pour out is not ourselves. We pour out Christ in us. We pour out the power of God. See, he gives us a portion of himself, of his goodness. And if we're truly sharing, that is what comes out of us. To touch the lives of others. 
oftentimes we need to be then replenished by God. On our own, we can't do any of these things. In fact, the apostles, when they come to Jesus, say, we weren't even able to cast out demons. And he says, ye of little faith. He rebukes them when their complaint comes. But then he does the work. He shows them. You see, he's filling them up with confidence as well, reminding them that it is by faith, not by their own energies. We might be tired. In fact, we would be too tired to even handle the task on our own. We need God from the very beginning to the very end, whether it's to overcome an addiction something that we're enslaved to in the world, or whether it's to do great things for the Lord. How many preachers preach and are exhausted afterwards because the word of God flows through them. It doesn't come from them. They may have studied, they may have prepared, but if it's a truly Holy Spirit moment, God is leading it, taking them from the manuscripts that they have prepared into a moment when it is not about them, but about your presence with God above. Can we trust God to lead? Can we trust God to be present? Can we trust God to work through us? The answer for me, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, is a resounding yes. We trust God in all that we do. We trust God tonight to lead us by his word, to be present with us, to touch our lives, Fill us up once more so that we, during this resting night, can be prepared to rise once more, to rise with the sun and his spirit inside us, that we might be able to accomplish the tasks that he puts before us, not for our glory or the bravado that Samson uses, but so that all glory may be his. Brothers and sisters, pray that to God tonight. Rest in his promise that he will always bring you through it. Provide what is needed to get you through it. Provide what is needed by his strength and his power. That amazing things might happen in life around you for the sake of others, for the grace of God, for the mercy of Jesus. Rest in that and know that he will give you all that is needed for the day to come. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I'm Motorcycle Pastor saying I'll see you in the morning.